Hello, so today we are doing this lead code problem, uh, medium problem 127 word ladder. And the problem says that given two words, begin word and end word, in the dictionary of word lists, we want to find the length of the shortest transformation sequence between the beginning begin word and the end word. Basically, we have a source and a target, and we want to find the, long, the, the length of the shortest transformation the sequence that we can do with a couple of two rules here. One is that only one letter can be changed at a time, and each transformed word has to exist in the list of words that we are given. Um, and we don't, we shouldn't count begin word as a transformed word, right? And so a couple of notes, which is th that, uh, that they gave us here. First, that we need to return zero if we can't find such a uh, transformation sequence, meaning that we can't go from the begin word to end word using the words in the word list. And all words have the same ling length. And also all words contain only lowercase characters. And we can assume that there are no duplicates in the word list. And also that begin and end word are not empty and are not equal. So we don't need to check for that. An example here is hit is the begin word or the source word and then our target or end word is cog and so the way to do that is we start from hit we go to hot and then we go to um, dot by changing h to d and then we go to dog by changing t to g and then we go to cog by changing d to c and that way you can see here we have this transition second transition third four so they kind of count starting or uh, they count the end so one two three so okay they count all of them so basically it's the number of arrows if you look at it here plus one um, that's how the counting works um, yeah so let's see how we can solve this problem um, okay so how can we solve this problem so the first thing we can take a look at is uh, the first example that we have so the first example what we have is that we have so we have the begin word I'm just gonna call it source and target because that's easier to to say so our source is hit the word hit and our target is the word um, cog right and then we have a set of words list that says to us um, the the words that we can use in the se transformation sequence. So we have hard, we have dot, and then we have dog, and then we have lot, log, and cog. So one thing that should kind of hint, give you a hint to a solution is, we kind of want to transform source um, using a couple of transformation like from word to word until we reach target so you can see here this is this kind of tells you relate there is a relation between words also because um, you have hot and dot there is just one difference of letters right so you have a consistent relation between words and what you want is to count kind of a path between them right what we want is counting a path between source and target right like how many steps we need to do in that path. And so this right away, when you have something like this, we need to think about using a graph. Um, one thing we should get used to is only co code and interview problems is that we, we don't always have like an explicit graph. The problem doesn't say you have a graph sometimes. Sometimes it's implicit in, in and you have to come up, construct a graph or you have to come up with a, with a with a with a, a way of doing a graph that solves the problem essentially, and so here that's exactly what we want to do. And if we construct it as a, as a graph, then now the problem becomes shortest uh, shortest path, right, from source to target. And that's a known problem that can be solved um, using uh, simply BFS, right? Basically, just do go through from source to target level by level and count uh, count um, the number of levels and that will give you the shortest path right <laughs> because because the first time you reach target that's certainly the shortest that's the definition of bfs on a graph and so in order to get a graph we need to have like a from a node we need to know what are the neighbors of a node and so for that we need to have a map 
and construct a map from each word to its uh, neighbors. And so how would that look in this example? So if I look at this example here, it would be something like I would start from hit and then I will go to the word that is closest to hit, right? So I would go here to uh, the next word where when I change just one letter, I get the next word. So the relation between graphs here, so the relation is node like one is neighbor of node two. If there is only one one difference letter between them, one letter difference between them, difference or edit between them, right? So that's the our def definition of a neighbor or an edge. And so that means here for hard, it's uh, it's the word hard because I goes to I goes so the transformation would be I to O, right? So that would be hard here. And then um, for hat is there another for hit is there another one like with I no that's the only one now for hat we would have dot so because we will change essentially we'll change um, H to D and then from dot we would have do we have anything for hat we have no that's pretty much it and then here we can have dog. And then f also from that we could have log, and then we could have also lot. And from dog we could have cog, and also from log we could have cog, right? And I think that's it. Yep. And so you could see here in order to get the shortest path we from hit to cog we just go this way then go this way right and then go this way and then go this way right so they could see count here from one two three four five and that's the result right so this uh, this we can do just using bfs okay so now let's see how we can construct our graph and then do bfs um just the normal bfs um on um uh, on lead code and see um, if it passes. So one thing though that is a little bit tricky in this here is so let's just write down first our steps. So our steps first construct a graph which means basically mapping from node to to its neighbors and then the second step is to construct uh, the second step is to do BFS um, and get the shortest path from uh, source to target right now one thing that is a little bit complicated in the first step um, is that we need to construct the graph and one thing is we need to determine the um, determine the, the that basically that difference between like word one and word two is equal to one, right? So one thing we can do is just check every two pairs of words in the list of words and just look at, since we know the word's length is the same, just look at each letter and, and count the difference. If it's bigger than one, then they have, then we, it's false. They don't, they are not neighbors. If it's true, then they are neighbors. Um, we could do that, right? Um, and th but the other solution that we can also do is that, okay, we know that th the problem says that they are all lowercase letters, right? So that means that, well, l let's just take hit, um, take the word hit, and just try, try changing H to A and see if that is in, in the words list. Um, then if it is, then that's a neighbor, and try changing H to B and see if bit is in the list of words. If it is, it's a neighbor, C, and do the same thing for D until you go over all lowercase letters, which are just 26, so it's not a lot. Um, and then once you are done with this and you, you set the neighbors if they are in the words list, go to I and do the same thing again. So for each character, do the same thing. And so that would be if the length of the word is, let's say the length of word, the word is K, 
that will give us O of 26K, which is approximately just O of K, right? And so if we do this for every word, and let's suppose the list of words is actually, um, the length of it is actually N, then the overall time here would be, to construct the graph would be O of N K, right? If we do it with the other way, th with the other method, so this is using method one, which is um, just doing this, um, um, like basically um, loop through letters. The other method that we said earlier, which is just check every check every two pairs of uh, words. That one is well. That one is length of word. So if we assume that length of the list of words is n, since we check every two pairs of letter of words, that would be a nested for loop, um, where each for loop's length is n. So that would be O of n squared, right? So that means that definitely this is the better way of constructing the graph. So we'll use this one. Um, and then after that, the second step is just normal BFS. Um, that we are used to, except there is uh, the we need to count the levels, right? And so we'll do that um, uh, on the um, lead code overview next. Um, so yeah, I'll do that next and see if it passes um, the test cases. Um, okay, so now let's do the um, let's do the lead code. Uh, l let's code up the solution that we just saw in the overview. Okay, so. The first thing we said is that we need to construct the graph, right? And so let's do that. So to construct the graph, we need um, a mapping from nodes to the list of um, of neighbors. And so we are just, oh wow, it has uh, auto-completion now, cool. So we need to import collections. Uh, and then here, um, so, um, okay, so now that we have the graph, we need to check every word, as we said, and then for each character, try all the lowercase letters, and see if um, and see if if when we change a letter to this a new a new character, um, we can check if it's in words, right? And so we can check if C, of course, is different than. So one thing I want to do here is, let's say, so here we are going to go through every word. So let's just say I in range of length of word, right? And so here, if the character, so here we need to go through all the alphabet letters, right? The, the lowercase letters. So one thing that I'm, I want to show you here is that if we do if Python has this thing where if we import strings, we have this thing called ASCII lowercase that just gives you all the lowercase letters. So you can, of course, take this and put it here, or you could just go through all of them. So we are going to go through string dot ski lowercase, right? And then we're got going to import string here. And now try. Um, basically, the first thing we need to do is check that it's not the same letter because at that point, it can be a neighbor. Because the transformation has to be a one edit. Um, and so we need to check if the current character that we are trying to change is different than the character that we want to change it with, then we can proceed. And so the new word would be, that we are going to try, would be everything before I, right? since we are before the letter that we are changing, and then we add replace the letter with the new character that we are changing it with, and then we go to the next character and the rest of the word, right? So something like this. So basically what I'm trying with that is, let's say our word is um, hit, the first one, right? And so let's say we, we try um, A, for example, right? So let's say we are at position one here in this uh, I here of the, uh, that goes through the range. So at that point, what we are going to do is well, we are going to say this, right? Okay, I need to say C is equal to, let's say, um, maybe C, uh, maybe O. Let's say we, 
went through the lowercase letters and we got that, right? So the new word would be this. So what would be the new word? It would be hot because we would replace I with hot, right? Now if we see is B, then what would be the new word? So the new word would be HPT, right? So what this tells you is we need to check if it's in the word list uh, because if it's not, then it's not a valid transformation. And so we need to check if new word is in word list. Then at that point, we have um, the node is a neighbor of. And since this is an undirected graph, I sorry, I draw it in the overview as an undirected graph, but actually it's a lot easier to make it just um, undirected. So let's just append. And then here, we can add a new word and also do the reverse here. So, a new word and then w. Okay, so now that we have our graph, the first step here, so this is the first step, construct a graph. Now we could do BFS. Okay, so our BFS would be, um, we need, uh, of course, with BFS, we need, um, we need a queue and we need a visited set, right? So our queue would be collections again, dot DQ, and, and uh, we will start with the source node, right? So I'm just going to call this source as we said in the problem description, target, and this is the list of words. So one thing is here I for I didn't do is we need this we need the graph to contain um, to contain the source so that we can check its neighbors right and so to do that I'm just going to add two words the the source node right and now um, I need to add to my visited set the source node because I already put it in the queue so my visited set will now contain source node right. And now I'll go through the queue. And um, the first thing you need to do is um, um, so we need to get level by level. So we need to do this level by level. So first we need to count the path, right? So that we can um, return it at the end. So at the end here, we will need to return the path that we will increase on every level. So here, let's take the size of the level. So let's say level length here. So that will be the length of the current queue. Um, and then what we, what we will do is we will go through a range of length of level length so that we can remove from the queue all the previous levels nodes so that would be doing something like this, and then we pop left. And we check if node is equal to target. That means we reached our destination. And so at that point, we can just return the path. Um, otherwise, we go through the neighbors and add them to the queue. So that would mean something like um, we need to go through the neighbors. So neighbor of in the neighbors of node, right? And then we check if we check if it's the neighbor is not visited yet. That means we can visit it again. So we are doing this here, of adding to visited, so that we don't end up with a, an infinite loop, right? And so we add to the queue at that point, um, neighbor. And then we take visited and again add to the queue. And here, because this is the start of a new level, so we need to increment our path by one. And the problem says if we don't find a solution, we need to return zero. So here we should return zero instead because that means we didn't find anything that is equal to target and the queue became empty, right? Uh, but if we did find a target, we return path, right? Um, yeah, so this is pretty much the BFS level by level here and this will give us the, the path. Um, so let's run this and see if it passes. Uh, word list, let's use words instead. What is word list? Um, uh, 
Yep, here. So when you hold it. Uh, this is actually the graph here is list. Uh, it's not a dictionary. It's a node to a list of nodes, right? Uh, yes, so here we already took the line level length, so let's just use it. Okay, so we have more than we should here. So there is a mistake somewhere. So this is the taking the source node, right? And then here we have a set, we add to the source, pass starts from one, take the length, we pop the node, we check if it's equal to target, we go through the graph, the nodes of the graph, And maybe then so one thing we should do here is to make this check faster is convert words to words set so equal to set of words um, okay so the problem is the path here is not indented good enough, so it should be outside the for loop because we want to do it for every level, not every node in, like not for every node in the level. So it should be outside. That's why it was um, more than it should. <coughs> okay, so that looks good. So let's submit and see if it passes. Okay, so this passes um, the test cases. Now let's talk a little bit about time complexity here. So time complexity is for BFS usually is O of V plus E, right? But first let's see the graph construction here that we are doing. Let's suppose if, if K is the length of the word, like the average, since the word size is equal, let's say for each word the length is K, right? Here we are doing, since there are um, 26 lowercase letters, we are doing 26. Here we are doing it for each character in the word, so that's k. And here, if n is the length of the word, that n. So all of this loop here for the construction of the graph, it's overall, it's O of 26, right? Multiplied by k, multiplied by n, which overall is just O of um, kn, right? And then in terms of BFS, since we said it's a uh, uh, ver vertices plus edges so the number of vertices that we have is at most the the number of words right so n and then for the for the edges it's um, each edge basically it's uh, it's the number of relations that we can have which we said here the graph can be at least o of k n because each word can have at most 26 multiplied by k neighbors, right? So each word would have at most, all in terms of um, complexity analysis here, k of n uh, neighbors. And so, and since we have n words, that would be so k of n for each word. So for each word, it's at most 26 k neighbors, right? And so overall, the edges are in terms of time complexity, k of n, right? So that means that also our BFS is here of k a n plus n, which is just um, at most would be that. Um, at least this is what I uh, what I uh, thought when I analyzed this. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at the at the. Um, Let's take a look at this and see if we can improve it. So one thing you could realize is, well, actually, we don't need to construct the graph at first and then use it. Um, we can get rid of this space complexity here that we... Because here, if you look at this space complexity here, is we have this additional graph that 
that is O of kn, and then we have this q that is also O of kn. So if we get rid of this graph, we will still have the q because it will contain the nodes and the visited set, but at least it's not, we are not taking, it's a little bit better, but not in terms of time complexity. So let's see how we can do that. So here you could see for neighbors, we are getting them from the graph node. So instead of doing that, we could just get them this way instead, right? So get them while, get the neighbors while doing the B, uh, while doing our BFS, right? So what that means is that when we do this here, instead of doing this, we will just, let's comment this out. Let's comment this portion out. And so here what will happen is we will go through, so we have the word, right? So we'll just go through it like this. Here, so let's replace that. Let's replace this for neighbors in graph node. And let's construct the neighbor here. So that would be for the current word, which is actually node. We will go through each character, see if it's different than the current one, and then construct the new neighbor. Check if it's first in the word set, that then it's a neighbor. So instead of adding it to a graph, we'll just do the processing here, right? So actually then we can just do and neighbor not in the visited set. And only then, so now you could see instead of doing the graph calculation here, we could just um, do it here in line, right? Uh, so this is not W actually, this is node. Okay, so that <coughs> that looks good. That um, let's submit and see if it passes. Okay, so that passes. Now, another additional optimization that we can do is instead of um, so inst inst essentially instead of <coughs> basically instead of using this visited set that is a new space that we can use, we can just use the word set here. So. When we, instead of adding to neighbors, we'll just remove it from the word set, which means that on the next iteration, we won't find it in the word set, and this if condition will fail, and we won't add it to the queue. And so to do that, we can just remove this here, and just instead of doing this visited added, we can just take word set here, and just discard the current neighbor. And basically, if I show you here, if I have maybe, let me just take the words, list of words here. So let's take this one. So let's say we have this list of words and let's construct the word set, which is just a set of words, right? So if we say word set dot discard and remove maybe dot, right? Let's say we remove dot. So in word set, we would have, you could see we have the set, but without dot. And so that's what we are doing here. So next time this will fail. So that means here, instead of doing this, we will just not add the words to the source, right? Because we don't want it, we want it to be considered visited. And that will reduce our code a little bit. So let's run this. <coughs> and we'll reduce also the space we are using. So let's get rid of this visited set that we don't need. And let's submit. Okay, so that still passes. Um, so one another additional thing we can do, another additional optimization we can do is actually we don't need to try all the um, all the, or actually we do need to try all the alphabet letters um, to know if it's in the word set, right? But one thing we can do is actually 
we can so this way of doing BFS is level by level where we go through the level with another for loop, right? But since we are using a DQ here with pop left, we are guaranteed that we will process the first level first, right? But the w the reason we did it this way with level by level is so that we can increase increase path by one and know the number of levels that we went through. So, but instead of doing that, actually, what we can do is we can just put the path length um, in the queue along with the node. So what do I mean by that? So what I mean is that for this source, actually, since the path for the level for it is one, let's just put, put it as a pair and say its level is one. And instead of doing this, that way we don't need this for loop and can just do uh, our BFS using the using a queue because the queue will put will put the the previous level in front of the next level and will allow us to process only level by level so we don't need this anymore and now we no longer need to increase the path here right but here we will get the level here when we pop and this way we can just return it instead of keeping track of it it's keep kept in the queue actually and so here for a new node when we append it to the queue its level is actually since it's the next level it's level plus one so here this this in the, we increment here instead right and And so, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then if we didn't find it, we return zero. And so you can see this is a lot shorter and easier to, s to understand. Okay, so let's submit. Okay, so this also passes. Um, okay, so the last thing we will look at for this problem is this can be solved with something called bidirect bidirectional BFS. Um, I'll just give a brief overview of it and then we can come back here and cut it up. Um, okay, so now let's see what's, uh, how to do this with bidirectional um, BFS. So it's bidirectional BFS, you could look it up more, but uh, essentially what this will help us with, it will help us with certain kinds of a graph. So let's say in this problem we had a graph where maybe hit like this, but the list of words maybe was a lot bigger. Let's say we had here a word, and then we had another word like this, and then we had another word, and then maybe we had another one, and then from here we had multiple other words, and then here you you get you get the idea it it keeps expanding right and so whenever you go here it will keep expanding like this so the width of the graph would be more right so the width of the graph would be a lot more and then after that it will come back right and diverge maybe to target something like this right and then we'll have maybe just one or two things here um, and then we would have the target um, so maybe the target node would be here. Let's say target is here. Let's say this is our target node. And maybe here it keeps expanding to other nodes, right? So if we do the solution BFS that we did here with this kind of graphs, what that means is, well, our levels will get really big before we reach the target, right? If we just do one directional BFS, we will go for all these nodes, on these all these edges for all of these nodes, until we reach this target and so what bidirectional dfs does instead is we don't let's let's do almost let's do this let's keep going from each side so basically have this going like this and then have also bfs go from this target and so that way they could meet in the middle somewhere without needing to explore all these other levels right so they could just since we, we will advance the, uh, this node and then go this node and then go here and then go here and then go here and then they will meet here and so when they meet we know that we can reach the target because if we can because from the point that they meet we can just go in the in the direction that we came from target and we will reach target right and so instead of instead of doing all these number of edges we'll have done maybe just this this level here right 
and then this level but we won't do maybe let's suppose there were a lot of levels here we won't do those right and so it would be faster and so that's what we that's the idea of bidirectional bfs and it's almost exactly like bfs like the normal bfs that we did except we will have um kind of two queues or two sets of um of nodes to explore at, at each time um, the forward ones that are starting from source source and the uh, backwards one that are starting from target so we will call them forward and backward and that's the idea uh, behind this right um, and so when do we know that we can reach target at this point? So reaching target here would mean would mean that if the node that we just popped um, that had been that just been popped so that node should if it is if it is in the backwards in the backwards set of nodes that means they met. So if the node if the node that we are at in the forward set has just is we can find it in the backward set that means we found a node that is in both sets that means they met right then then we can return um, so at this at that point what can we return as the path so at, uh, basically we can keep counting for every time we advance either forward or backward we keep counting so at that point we can return that path right so this is the idea behind um, bidirectional BFS and so let's code it up and uh, see if it passes the test cases um, okay so let's code our bidirectional BFS so instead of, um, of this one queue here let's just use two sets one is for forwards because we want to check if the if if they meet we need to check if a node that we just got from forward is in the backwards um list of nodes and so with the queue that would be our event checking and so we want to check it in constant time and so that's why we are using a set here so and this is the backward set of nodes that we are traversing backwards and so for the forward we will start from the source node for the backward no um, set we will start from the target node right and then we will need uh, to check first if target is not in because we added backwards to target we can't just ch check if it's um, it's already in backwards set so we may, we may end up with a case where we'll say that we can reach the target but target is not in the words list and so to avoid that we can just check before even doing BFS that target is not in the list of words if it's not we can just return uh, zero because that means we can't reach it but here we need to keep going as long as both forward and backwards contain nodes. And one thing we can do here to make this bidirectional BFS faster is whichever queue is the, is the smallest, that's the one that we'll be processing. Because remember, th the whole reason we are doing this is to avoid going through a level that has a very large width. And so to avoid doing that, we'll pick the, um, the set we'll pick forward or backward depending on which one has the smallest width essentially and so we will say if length of forward is bigger than the length of backwards then since we want to traverse um, forward we'll just say okay let's just switch them so that we can traverse um, the smallest one first in Python, that just would mean something like this. And now we can always um, traverse forward and we'll use this to switch between the two. Of course, here the naming may not end up accurate, but um, that's just uh, because we are switching here between them. So, um, so what will happen here is that, well, I need to go through the go through the list of words in forward so that's the queue that I'm traversing that I'm going to so forward okay and then do this here so let's just call it node here and that way I could do the what we are doing here 
just one thing is I deleted the check for target. So when do we check for target at this point? It's here. So when we have a neighbor, we want to check if that neighbor is in the backward set, which means we the two met, the two set have met, which means we found the path, right? So we will check if neighbor is in uh, backward. That means the two are, have met and we can just return um, our path. Now, how do we we need to comp we need to have a variable here to keep track of path. So let's just define it here. So let's say we have path, which starts out as um, from source, which is one, and so um, so we count source. So that's one here, and then we want to also count target, right? And so that's plus one here, um, and then. We to go to the for the to accumulate the nodes for the next level. Let's just have this um, list here, <coughs> and here I will since I no longer have a queue, I will just put them in the next right, and I don't need to pass level since now I'm using I'm count I will count, be counting path explicitly, and <coughs> so now here I will put in forward the list of nodes that I accumulated for the current level, and then I'll increment path. Um, and then that's pretty much it. <coughs> um, yeah, but we, you can see here we are using these and we are alternating between um, traversing first in the direction of, um, of source and then traversing from the direction of target, depending on which one has the smallest width. Okay, so that looks cool. Let's submit. Okay, so that passes. Um, yeah, so this actually would be efficient depending on what the type of the graph we have. If you have a graph that is like the, the, the one in the example where it's almost a line, then this one make a difference. But if it was a graph like the one I, um, I uh, demonstrated in the overview, then this would be a lot faster. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye